Hello, I've got a, a change of scenery today. You'll notice that this isn't the bookshelf, it's a, it's a fireplace and, and that's, well, that's an indicator of uh, uh, what today's video is going to be about. And today's video is going to be about how to light a fire, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to light a fire in the fireplace. Um, this is, of course, not my house. You can tell by all the pink flowers everywhere. This belongs to my great grandma. Um, he's very kindly allowing me to film it. She's just sat there, uh, but she, she doesn't want to be in the video. So he's going to be silent as a mouse, I'm sure. Anyway, so. There are three key ingredients to a fire, and these we know are temperature, you've got to get it hot enough, oxygen, and fuel. Now, we've got oxygen, obviously, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to breathe. Uh, I do breathe in oxygen, funny enough. We've got fuel in the form of, well, two forms. There's coal, which is in this dog poo bag. There's wood in the form of these logs, which are in a basket over there. And uh, there's also some smaller wood. <coughs> Kindling, very good, Foss. This is kindling, which is um, it's, it's easier to light, which then can make the. Oh, firelighters. I'm going to get onto the firelighters. Oh, yes, and so to achieve the temperature side of things, we have some firelighters, which I believe are essentially this kind of um, uh, uh well, it, it it's it's basically just uh petrol but in block form, um, and so that's very easy to light. You just boom with a match like that, and so it, it uh, sets off the kindling, which in turn sets off this, which raises the temperature high enough to set off the coal. And the coal is for longevity, really, because the coal will stay hot for a while, which means that it can prolong the fire's existence. So, enough talking. Action. That's the fireplace. I cleaned it out just a minute ago with the specialised fireplace cleaning tool, also known as a hoover. Uh, although, not really, it's known as a vacuum cleaner. Anyway, so, first step is to put down the coal, which I'm going to do now. I'll get some... One dog poo bag on the hand to prevent coal dust going all over my fingers because it, uh, well, it's it's annoying basically. That's the only reason. Making sure the dog isn't going to come in shot. That'd be very nice. And so we're going to put put the coal not on the leaving carpet in the fireplace, just like so. I'm not sure. Can you see that? You can see me doing something. It's putting the coal in the fireplace. And so the, the coal goes at the bottom. Don't know why it just does. Um, I've not been lighting fires very long. I started in the winter of last year. Um, you know, because it was cold. And the best way to stop being cold is to be warm. <laughs> you know, there's plenty of wisdom on this channel. I'll just put these in the bin. Ah, right. Ooh, coal's in. Kindling next. You don't have to be incredibly precise with this, it just, uh, just goes on. There we are. Lovely. Right, so, now to actually start the fire part of the fire. Oh, hang on, there's an extra bit. So, we'll get our fire lighters. So, yeah, it's just, just block form petrol, basically, that's all it is. And, uh, Break it up into some chunks. Place it on the fire. Right. Now, ignition. To which we're going to need matches. Now, these matches are not the same as ordinary matches. They're much longer because my Auntie Lizzie doesn't like fire. Which is why I do this job. So, there's the match. Um, I believe the chemical is red phosphate. And... Um, that will create friction with this, which will generate fire. So here we go. Observe. Oh, oh, don't let it go out. That'll be embarrassing. There we go. As I'm sure you can see, the fire has started. But our work is far from done because we're going to keep the fire going for long enough to be effective at heating us. Just to get them out of the way, wouldn't want the house to go up. Right, so we just got to wait for the fire to sort of spread about the kindling, at which point we can put the logs in, and um, and that will that that will be the job basically. So um, I'll, I'll I'll cut the shot until it's uh, done enough that we can put the logs on. Hello, I'm on this side now. I should mention that uh, this is a fire prod. Uh, 
and it's a very useful bit of kit because if you put your hand in there it's going to hurt funny enough and so this is very good for manipulating the bits anyway so there's quite a lot of fire there now so i think we can probably put the first log on this is the one i've chosen don't know why it was just the closest to hand so here we go you'll observe that the log is now on and that will catch fire quite soon i should think and essentially that is that is how you keep the fire going you just put a log on wait till it burns put a log on and that keeps it going, basically, because the coal stays hot for much longer than the wood, which means that it, it uh, preserves the fire over a long period of time. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, how to light a fire and how to keep a fire going. And it's, it's quite good. It's quite good fun, really. And it keeps you very warm. I, I assure you, I won't need this jumper for much longer. I'll be able to take it off. Uh, so there you go. Enjoy. J uh, quick note, I forgot to add, you've got to put the fire guard on because otherwise bits start coming out. So um, there it is. This is the fire guard. It's just a big mesh. Goes in front, stops big bits of burning wood crackling out because as you might be able to hear, it's crackling, which is essentially the wood splitting as it uh, expands with the heat, I assume. I don't know the exact, um, the, the chemistry behind it because I'm not a chemist. And so, yeah, it's just for safety, basically, so your house doesn't burn down in case you fall asleep while tending the fire. So safety, safety, well, maybe not first, but safety. Drop the gun.